Good morning. I welcome you to worship from the sanctuary at First Presbyterian Church here in Easton, Pennsylvania on a beautiful Sunday morning. And it is a pleasure to see on my feed that you have gathered with us. This morning, I don't have many announcements. I hope that you have prepared your communion elements, that you have some juice, grape juice, or water, and some bread or crackers to, uh, to join us as we celebrate communion this morning. I do not have many announcements, so I will invite us to turn our hearts to worshiping God. I do remember that uh, this is the first of the month. So this Monday, our uh, sister church, Genesis, will be bringing food to uh, our, our partners in mission at Safe Harbor. And then we will be collecting for project as well on Tuesday. So please um, remember that uh, as well. With that having been said, let us turn our attention to worshiping God. Please join your voice with mine in our call to worship. Voice of God, you speak to us in so many ways, giving us strength. We come to worship our God and to, and to listen to God's messages of hope. Voice of God, you speak to us in so many ways, giving us peace. We come to worship our God and to learn of God's messages of grace. Voice of God, you speak to us in so many ways, and we respond in worship as we reverently honor you. We come to worship our God and to be challenged by God's messages that call us to give glory to God. Amen.
Friends, on this Communion Sunday, I invite you to join with me in a prayer of confession. We will then hear God's affirmation of our confession and forgiveness of sins as we sing together uh, the doxology following this prayer. Let us pray. Creator of the universe, we stand amazed at your power and glory. We are eager to worship you and offer our praise, but we are often reluctant to answer when we hear you calling our name. We sing our songs of tribute in the sanctuary, but shy away from boldly showing loving kindness, seeking justice, and embracing humility. Forgive us when we do wrong. Renew us with the power of your ever-present love and strengthen us to proclaim your grace throughout the world. Amen. scripture comes to us from Psalm 29, a Psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Brothers and sisters, here we are on Labor Day weekend. And I would like to invite you to think about some important work. Work that the church has to do and that you have to do as a Christian. There's little I can say that is positive about the past several months of the coronavirus keeping us from being together in worship, from being together as the church. But one small grace has been the reminder that the church is not this building. 
We, the First Presbyterian Church of Easton, we are not this lovely, holy building. It is a gift to us, but it is not who we are. Friends, the church came into existence when Jesus no longer walked the earth. When his first students and followers of Christ, when they knew they had to stand up and go out into the world to tell the world all that they had witnessed firsthand of who Jesus was. That Jesus was indeed the Son of God who lived and died and rose again to cut the chains of sin and death to offer us all redeeming love. And so as people heard this good news that was proclaimed about who Jesus was, they came and they were baptized in the name of the one true God, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and we still baptize with water and with those words. And as they were baptized, then the people began to gather. And it was when the followers of Christ gathered that the church was born. The church was then and is now, today and always, a people. The church is Pat and Gloria and Elizabeth and Rich and Michelle, and Dahlia, and Mercy, and Stephanie, and Angel, and Naomi, and Kevin, and Charlie, and Ginny, and Jackie, and I can go on and on. You are the church. And today I want to say, we who are the church, we have important work that we are called to. Today's psalm begins with a command. Ascribe to the Lord all glory and honor. Name the glory of God that you see everywhere. Give God praise. Give glory to God whose voice resounds over all the earth. To give glory to God is a command to worship God. Worship is not what I or Gloria or Elizabeth or our liturgist performs for the church. Bill Bartlett is currently our session elder who works and leads our worship team, but the worship team is not in charge of our worship. Each leader that I've named, they have unique gifts and special roles that they bring to help us facilitate worship together. Now, Rich has been a huge help as we have tried to figure out our audio and visual technology. But I don't think we want him playing the organ on Sunday mornings. Maybe not. I am equipped in my role as your minister of word and sacraments, sacrament to preach God's word and to celebrate communion. But I can assure you, you do not want me running electrical cables for our sound system and certainly not singing Elizabeth's beautiful solos. Each of us have a unique calling in worship, but all of us have the command to worship. It is not just the work of a few. It is all of our work. The work of God's people is to worship God. You are called by God. We are all called to join and to share our glory to God. Now, I remember back in March when news of COVID-19 was, was beginning to come to our attention, not only mine, but that of other church leaders and of our church leadership. And we were, we were emailing among the session 
and among the staff, and we were, we were making plans to come and to worship. And as the week went on and concern grew, we made the decision that we rarely do. It is a decision of last resort, and that was to cancel our joint communion, to not come together for worship. No one told us we had to do this, but we knew that God would want us to be good stewards of the health of each of our congregational members. And similarly, without anyone telling us, right away, all the leadership knew that our priority would be to figure out how we could worship together again, safely. We are so blessed with the gift of technology and creativity, and we have been allowed the fruit of the Spirit, given the fruit of the Spirit, which is patience, to be able to continue to worship, to give God praise, to celebrate communion like we do today, because worship is at the heart of who the church is because you are called by God to worship, and we are called by God to worship, to come together and offer God our praise and thanksgiving. Today, the good news that I bring to you is a commandment. Worship God. We have a shared, a common purpose, mission, and calling to worship God. Now, as a good Presbyterian, when I began to think about what worship is, I turned to the constitution of our church to find some guidance, to find some words for what is worship. Now, the second part of our constitution is a book called the Book of Order. And I turned to a specific part of that book that we call the Directory of Worship. And it begins with some bullet points about what worship is. And the first bullet point is glory to God. And the sentence that follows it is this. Christian worship gives all glory, honor, praise, and thanksgiving to the holy triune God. We are called to give all glory and honor and praise and all our thanks to God. The director of worship goes on to say that we gather in worship to glorify the God who is ever present and, and active among us, particularly through the gifts of the word and sacraments. And so today, part of our worship is to come to the table and to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. All our worship is focused on what? is focused on God. What is successful worship? When is worship good? It's not when I feel appreciated and congratulated. Worship's aim is not to make you, the worshiper, feel good and happy. Worship is not a performance to gain more members. The aim of Christian worship is to draw our attention, to put our focus squarely and wholly on God and to respond to God by giving our praise and thanksgiving. Many of the Psalms were written to facilitate worship. Ancient words from people in a far off place with a completely different experience of the world, and yet their words still can resonate with us today 
because they focus on the glory of God. They help us to be reminded of who God is, to spark in us that awe that comes about when we just pause for a moment to reflect that the giver of all life is concerned about who we are. We turn to God's word in scripture each week because we are people of the word. That is part of who we are as Christians and reformed Christians. God's word is so central to our worship. And we turn to that word to be reminded of God's glory so that we can respond in praise and thanksgiving. Now, it just so also happens that when the spirit moves and a pastor thoughtfully and prayerfully proclaims God's word, that God is glorified and God's people are lifted up and God's people are challenged or comforted or equipped. And it just so happens that with music and prayer, that those things, when focused on giving glory to God, can also tune us into the Spirit and connect us with each other and can bring us joy as we focus on God. All worshipful acts that give glory to God also feed us. The communion table is a place when we remember who Jesus Christ was. We refocus our thinking away from all those other things in the world that draw our attention, that say that they are important. In worship and at the table, we remember who Christ was and is and forever will be. Friends, in this time when we are far away from each other, there are one, two, three, four, five of us in this big sanctuary this morning. But there are many of you gathered with us, far away in your own homes. In this time when this is a reality, and in the weeks and months to come, when things will continue to be different than what they once were, when we will not likely come together and hug and sing as we sit shoulder to shoulder, that norm is gone for quite some time. During this time, I ask you to remember your work, to remember that you are called to worship God. You may need to put in some extra effort to create a routine that allows you to focus on God on Sunday mornings or Sunday afternoons. You may need to work to recommit yourself to gather with us over this technology. It may at times be frustrating. It has been. You are called to worship, to the work of worship. You may need to have visual cues in your own home, just like you have elements today at your own table to join us at this table. Whatever it takes to allow you to consider and to reflect on who God is, to center yourself in the wonder, the awe, the mystery, and glory of God, at least every Sunday. You must be a part of giving glory to God. Today, I pray that you will pause for just a moment to consider and reflect on when you have recently seen the glory of God. Where has God's voice whispered to you or sung to you? Where have you heard that voice as the psalmist spoke of? Maybe in the thunder, or in the cry of a child, or in the voice of someone calling out in need, 
or in the kind words of a stranger or a loved one? Where have you heard the voice of God and felt the need to respond and give glory to God? Today, may you pause and consider where you have seen God's glory. Where have you stopped for a moment to give thanks to God? As I paused to reflect on all that I have to give thanks for, I could, I could spend this entire hour just listing all that there is to be thankful for. Our very life, every breath we take, the body which enables us to move in, th in this world, our senses that allow us to see and to smell and to taste and to hear, ears that can listen if we choose, colors, touch, a roof over our head, food that nourishes our body. There is so much to acknowledge, to ascribe, thanksgiving too for God is good and God is the source of all that is good in the world and so we should give glory to God friends the last sentence in this paragraph that begins our Presbyterian directory of worship is something you might not expect we often think of worship only of what happens in the sanctuary or during the hours that we set for worship. Perhaps you have some devotional time each day. I know that's a struggle that I even have to create regular times of devotion. But if the heart of worship is to give glory to God, then it doesn't just exist for an hour every Sunday or 15 minutes every morning when the work of worship is yours and mine, it shouldn't just happen on Sundays. The Directory of Worship states, we are sent out in service to glorify the same God who is present and active in the world. You are called by God. You are called to gather with others who have heard God's call. You are called to join with us and to worship God, to give God glory. But today, the good news I bring you is that our shared purpose is also to live in ways which bring glory to God, who is active and present, not just in this space but out in the world, right where you are. So yes, this week, we have this time of worship. But in between the times when we gather, we have work to do to honor God by the choices we make, to glorify God with the language we use and the way we speak to others. We have work to do to show God our love by how we love our neighbors. This too is worshipful. Live a life of worship, my friends. And I wonder what that would feel like if you remember each day that your whole life can be lived as a response of praise as a response of thanksgiving and devotion to your creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Friends, remember your calling and let us worship God. Amen. Amen.
the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares We have already come And grace will lead us home when we Then when we first begun. Friends, with that beautiful music still resounding in our ears, we are called to continue to worship God and to share in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Friends, this is not my table. This is not a Presbyterian table, and this is not the space that defines our celebration. The Spirit of God invites us and invites you where you are to this time of celebration, of sharing in words and remembrance, of reflecting on who Christ Jesus is and all that he gave to us. The many meals that Jesus sat down with strangers and friends to share simple gifts of bread, of wine, so that we might remember. And so you are invited to share in the feast. Let us come to the table. Would you join me in the words of the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to come before you, O God, and give you praise for all your works. You created the world and called it good and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Therefore, we join and praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Remembering all your mighty gifts, we come before you to offer our thanks. You sent us your son, and he lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, and then rose to new life that we might live, and all creation might be restored. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, he took bread and he broke it. And he shared it with his friends. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And whenever you do this, Remember me. In the same way, Jesus took a cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood and shed for you as a forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, remember me. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share this cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Friends, great is the mystery of faith. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit among us and among these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us share in the feast. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and to work to your praise and your glory. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go out into your day. Perhaps that going out is simply going to the grocery store or taking a walk around the block. Whatever way that you will interact with the world today, remember your calling, that you are a follower of Christ, and that all that you do should bring praise and glory to God and give God honor. Amen.